Now I know what it, what it was talking about without reading that. I can't read that either. I have it here, so I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome to the uh, Conservation Commission meeting of uh, April 7th. 2022. My name is Ellie Lawrence. I'm vice chair of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission, filling in for the chairman who's absent tonight. Uh, we will now convene the April 7th, 2022 meeting, Yarmouth Conservation, as required by GL Chapter 30A, Section 1825, and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of, 19, of 2021. 1991 an act relative to extending the certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, the public are able to attend this meeting either in person or via the alternative public access. Members of the public may watch the meeting live on channel 18 or watch and participate in the meeting hosted in Zoom. The meeting notice provides necessary instructions to join the meeting via Zoom. Please note that audio, video, and screen sharing functions will be disabled for all attendees. You will request you may request to participate by using a raise hand function. If a commis commissioner member is remote, we will begin taking a roll call for quorum. Ed Hoops is not here. Tom Durkin. Here. Patricia Mulhern. Here. Ellie Lawrence. Here. Rick Bishop. Present. Paul Huggins. Here. And David Bernstein. He is here. He is just listed as Angela in the Zoom, so we might change his name. To Angela? <laughs> <laughs> David, I'll change his name. Oh, he's okay. Cool. And then if he wants to unmute and let us know that he's there he here. There he is. I am here. All right. With a quorum present, I will now call the meeting to order. The first agenda on for tonight's meeting is a Eagle Scout service project on the Blueberry Patch by um, Frank Baker Road, and that is by Eddie Newell. I, um, go right up to the, you can go up to the uh, up podium. To Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Eddie Newell. Um, I'm here to present my Eagle Scout project, um, and I wanted to thank everyone for your time. Um, so right now, what I have planned for my project is the uh, public blueberry patch at the end of Frank Baker Road. Um, if you could go to the... Yeah, if you use that, you yeah. use the area. Yeah. So here's a, a satellite view of the, the patch. Um, it's right near Swan Pond that goes out to uh, Parker's River. Uh, it's adjacent to Route 28. Um, so here's the dirt access road at the end of uh, Frank Baker Road. It's in need of some work. Uh, there's uh, lots of, uh, you know, dead tree limbs and uh, lots of brush, uh, making it hard for vehicles to get in. Um, this is the western side of the patch. Um, as you can see, it's really overgrown, uh, overdue for some work. Um, yeah, um, so these are two uh, pictures of two different bushes there. Uh, the one on the left, it's a older bush. Um, it's probably, you know, one of the oldest there. Um, and it's really overgrown as, you know, a lot of canes growing in it. Um, the one on the right, uh, I assume was planted later on. It's only has a few canes um, and it's not in, you know, too, mu too much need of work, but um, still needs to be pruned. Um, so yeah, the, here you can see all the rows. Um, the blueberries are cultivated in rows with each being, you know, between three and four feet apart. Um, however, these images show overcrowding by nature plant life neg negatively affecting the health of the patch make it le making it nearly indistinguishable um, so just really overgrown really overdue from for a cleanup um, there's lots of dumped trash litter um, there's uh, debris there's someone left a bike out there there's just a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned out um, and I went I took a trip up to Connecticut to visit a blueberry farm 
and um, to learn about pruning blueberries. Um, so I showed, this is Tom from uh, Norton, uh, Norton Brothers Fruit Farm. I showed him the pictures of the patch um, and he went down to show me the pic, uh, his blueberry bushes. And these were pruned a couple of weeks before I visited. And you can see how, how much smaller they are than you know, the ones that are 10 to 12 feet tall down at the patch here. Um, the bushes life cycle, a cane uh, produces berries from between one year old to eight years old. Um, after it, you know, the cane has been on the bush for eight years, it stops producing fruit and that's when it can be pruned. Um, and the ones that you do prune, you prune them very close to the ground. Um, you don't wanna leave it you know, too high. Um, Let's skip over that. Um, so this is my plan. So first, we're going to start uh, by getting rid of the over overgrown overgrowth in the, in and around the bushes, like oak and pine saplings. There's a lot of uh, stuff that could become a bigger problem later on. There's lots of poison ivy and cat briar, uh, invasive species growing in it that we need to get rid of. Um, there is a little bit of brush mowing that I'd like to do between the rows, lots of like oh, shrubs and stuff that are making it like hard to walk through the rows and for people to access. And I'll also get rid of you know, any other obstacles. There's a fallen tree um, and like the trash that I talked about earlier. And then my next step is my plan is to cut all the bushes to the ground, which will it's because the bushes are so long overdue, it's it's just a smarter idea to start from scratch and give it a couple of years to regrow. And yes, um, then I also plan to use all the brush from the bushes to make wood chips to spread around the bushes to stop from invasive growth and lower the pH, which is like an acid in the soil for healthy bushes. Um, and I, I'm planning to cut at least a minimum of half the patch. It's a really big patch, but if I can, I'd like to do more. Um, and then my final step is cleaning up the road and parking lot. Like I said, the road has a few problems. Uh, it's making it hard to get vehicles in. Um, there's you know dead branches hanging over that could be hazardous. Um, and as you can see in the picture there, uh, there's like a kind of like a mud pit with like tire ruts that could be filled in with dirt kind of for like a temporary fix if um, for now at least. Um, and that's it. Does um, anyone have any questions? Anybody on the board? <clears throat> Troop 59. Troop 50. Troop 59 doesn't. I was a member 50 years ago. <laughs> Great project, thank you. Thank you. That was an excellent presentation, I appreciate it. Uh, there was a fellow who was a uh, past conservation administrator. His name was Brad Hall and he had a very strong interest in the blueberry patch. Have you had a chance to talk to him at all? No, but I, I went through, um, I looked up things about the blueberry patch and I, I heard his name before and there was something back in like 2011 when he retired Yeah, that they wanted to name the patch after him, but I haven't seen anything since. Yeah. Well, it, it might be of interest uh, and I'm sure it would be for him uh, if you contact him. Thank you. It's a wonderful idea. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great idea. And um, I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about a blueberry patch in town. So we could revitalize that. That'd be great. I have my own blueberry patch, so maybe I'll even learn something about this. So, um, but thank you for doing it. Good luck to you. And um, I'd like a really worthwhile endeavor. Looks like a lot of work, too. So, okay. all right. Thank you. I hope you'll have the troop helping you while you do this, right? Yeah, yeah I will. It's <laughs> a lot of work. Well, good luck. I think. Uh, Anybody want to make a motion? I don't think there's a motion for this. So we, we wish you the best of luck and look forward to fresh blueberries. Thank you. And I'll, um, I'll 
get in contact with you and give you Brad Hall's details if you want to reach out to him mm -hmm. and just let him know what you're doing. He might be interested in coming along and taking a look. Good, good call. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next item on the agenda is uh, Greg Pasquale for 30 Driftwood Lane, a proposed vista pruning on a coastal bank. All right. Good evening. Could Good you evening, state your name the for the record, sure. please? My name is uh, Greg Pasquale. I'm a co-owner of uh, 30 Driftwood Lane. I own it with my wife. Uh, um, she could not be here this evening. We are year-rounders here. Uh, we uh, bought our home about four years ago. Uh, and this is a request for determination um, to get permission to do some vista pruning on some trees that are on the coastal bank. Um, last year I was here, well not here, I was remote uh, and I got permission uh, to do some, uh, some vista pruning. I engaged uh, a gentleman by the name of Jared Pare uh, from Save a Tree. Uh, and uh, he did the work and I think he did the work to a T as to what was allowed. Um, and uh, I've engaged him to do this. He has submitted a plan. I took some photographs uh, and uh, I marked all the trees. Uh, and um, I think that in total, there are about five or six trees that uh, need to be pruned down a bit so there'd be a better view uh, of, um, of the pond. So I don't know if anybody has any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Paul? Do you have oh, what's that? Um, we were out to see that. It's a lovely spot there. And um, you said um, just make sure there's no more than 30% of the um, canopy is, is, is uh, allowed to be pruned. I had uh, I had asked Jared if he could come to the meeting. Yeah. So since he's the one doing the work, so there'd be no miscommunication. Mm -hmm. He said that his company doesn't like him to be getting okay. in the middle of things, but that's why I brought my pad. Okay. No more than 30% of the canopy. So it's like it would be a thinning more than a chopping of the trees. Thinning, yeah. okay. You all set that? Yep. Tom? Uh, <clears throat> as far as the uh, understory is, is uh, concerned, uh, you've mentioned that it's dense. Uh, but no more than 20% of that to be taken out. So you got two percentages that you're okay, kind no, of interested in. No more than 20% of the understory. Understory, right. All set. Thanks, all set. Um, I, I tend to agree with both Pat and Tom. Um, the Vista pruning is something that we really got to look out for and not continue year by year, right. let, let it grow. Um, when I was last year, the pruning that I was allowed to do last year, they indicated that, uh, you know, maybe in two or three more years, come back for something like that, but it needs to regrow to a certain point. I completely understand. Kelly, do you have any? Um, I just wanted to clarify because we, yeah, there was a comments about the 30% of the canopy and 20% of the understory, but you're not proposing any cutting of the understory, right? Because it's really the canopy that's in the Not region. really, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah, I yeah no, not the understory, not as I remember. I think it was just the, the, the tops of the trees. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay, no, no clarify. understory. So. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's all. Well, you just said the tops of the trees, but we don't want you topping the trees. No, 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 I understand. Okay, <laughs> okay. all right. I just wanted to clarify that. Right. Uh, anybody in the audience that has any remarks would like to step forward? I do. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely David forgot, David. David. Oh, geez. I go wave one time and you'll totally forget about me. Um, actually, I, I was just going to repeat what Kelly said, or I was going to bring up what Kelly said about the understory. And I assume this gentleman you hired is a certified uh, licensed landscaper or certified in what he does. Am I correct? He is a certified arborist, Mr. Parry. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. So would anybody like to make a motion? No, Tom. I'll make a motion that um, we approve the application, noting the 30% reduction mm -hmm. in the um, upper portion of the of the trees and 20% of the story as uh, limitations. Seconded. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. I uh, have to, uh, can't leave without saying that I think I've been upstaged by the first presenter who did an excellent <laughs> job. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, the next item on the agenda is for Lisa and Mark Corsio. If I pronounce that right, nine Channel Point Drive, proposed addition of living space and expansion of an existing deck within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Good evening. I am Craig Ferrari with Down Cape Engineering here presenting, presenting for the property owners at nine Channel Point Drive. Uh, this proposal is a small addition of living space, which occurs within uh, the footprint of an existing deck. And then their plan is to expand that that deck a little bit. Um, so this addition is pretty much in the corner of an existing house. Uh, the only resource we're working with here is is the flood zone. We're a couple hundred feet away from from all the water separated by uh, streets and houses. Um, so pretty pretty straightforward project. Pretty minimal impact here. Um, so be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, thank you. Paul, not right now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I was just noted about the, um, is there a setback um, from the deck to the septic system or the septic tank, should I say? Um, so the, the only, there, there's no required setback from a, a deck to a septic tank. So, so the only concern there would be that the sauna tube for that corner of the deck doesn't go on top of the septic tank. So they'll have to set that back a little bit, make sure that they dig that next to the tank so that the, the top of the tank's not loaded by that, that weight, okay. um, which should be able to be accomplished pretty easily for this project. Okay. No, I'm all set, thank you. Thank you. Yep. David? I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Kelly, do you have anything to add? I don't. Okay. Anybody would like to make a re recommendation for a negative two determination? So moved. Second. Rick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, you have to do a roll call vote. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I know. Okay, you're right. You're right. Okay, so we have to do a roll call vote because David is uh, far away. So, Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Ellie's aye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. And that was a negative two to two. Negative two. Correct. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. Negative two is good, by the way. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is for Virginia and David Gazzolio. I'm sorry if I oh. didn't pronounce that right. 10 Middle Road in Yarmouth, proposed replacement of existing deck with an addition within the buffer zone to a coastal bank and salt marsh. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board. For the record, my name is Kieran Healy. I'm a land surveyor with the BSC Group representing. Ginny and David Gazzolo is how they pronounce it. Um, this is a project that is down um, close to a coastal bank. The, for those of you who've been out there, you'll have seen that the existing deck is there. It's a first and second story deck. And what they're looking to do is basically infill, infill between two floors of the deck for a pantry area. Um, right now, most of the storage is in the basement and um, they are getting older and they just want to have some space to put Basically, it's a pantry and no more, no less. That's what they're putting there um, so they can better access the food storage. Um, other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Paul? No questions. No question. No question. Nothing? Okay. David? Um, David? Sorry, I've got to mute myself. Nothing. Um, the only one that I have is the uh, enclosure of a deck that close to a coastal bank, but I guess that deck has been there for way before our uh, wetlands 
came in. So um, I guess I have nothing really more to say. Kelly? Um, yeah, so there's no change in the footprint on the ground. It's all the same. They're actually reducing one of the sets of stairs that goes up from the ground to the first floor. That will be removed. So it's actually decreased in that area. Okay, so uh, do I have a motion for a negative three determination? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, David? Uh, yes, aye. Paul? Aye. Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. Aye. So it passes with a negative three determination. Right. Thank you for your time. Oh. <laughs> All right, the next one on the agenda is for Brian Basier, 63 Thatcher Shore Road, Yarmouth proposed construction of a driveway and underground utilities within the buffer zone to a bordering vegetated wetland, salt marsh and coastal bank. Good evening, Lynn Good evening. Cameron, representing the applicant. It should be fairly easy. It's simply to reinstate um, a prior determination that you issued. I heard that he just missed the extension deadline by three days. Um, one day. One day. One day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> Even sadder. Um, so this is the same project. It's simply a driveway access to a single family dwelling, which will be constructed beyond your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. We looked at it again for um, possibility. I know it's not conservation per se jurisdiction under the wetlands, but the stormwater regulations and the total disturbance is less than an acre, so it won't need it, it back anyway. Um, so I'll stop, see if you have any questions. No, 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 no questions. No questions? We were there no yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. David, any questions? None for me, thank you. Ellie? Um, I have nothing. Uh, could I have a motion for a negative three? No motion. Second. All in favor? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rick? Aye. Tom? Aye. Pat? Aye. Paul? Aye. David? Aye. I vote aye too. All in favor. There you go. Unanimous. I have the next one. Oh, you have the next one. Okay. <laughs> it does. Okay, I won't kick you out. <laughs> All right, that's another RDA. Shoving that stuff over at me. All right, the next uh, item on the agenda is for Stephen and Cheryl Karras, uh, 7, uh, 379 Weir Road, Yarmouth, proposed construction of a barn and an extension of a driveway within the buffer zone to a vegetated wetlands. Again, Lynn Hamlin representing the applicant. <laughs> There's two wetland resource areas, one's on site, it's an active commercial cranberry bog. And there's one across Weir Road. I want to apologize. It's delineated conservatively at the top of the bank by the road, but I relied on third party information before I went and actually looked at it. Um, but it's delineated correctly. It's a, a wetland. Um, so, what the Karases would like to do is propose a barn. It's um, like a barn garage. He wants to store his antique cars in it. Um, the contractor suggested that it utilize. Um, the upper space upstairs is a workout room. So he plans on putting a bathroom in there. It's not gonna be a sleeping area, but the bathroom will be connected to the existing septic system. The septic system is designed for three bedroom use. Oh, I'm sorry. I usually have such a loud voice. Um, is designed for a three bedroom system anyway. And the existing house is a two bedroom structure. So it will more than accommodate it. The um, driveway, it's a dirt driveway. If you were down there, it will remain a dirt driveway, just be extended to access the barn. I've specified that any disturbed area is to be revegetated with a conservation mix. And my favorite one at the moment is the Colonial Seed Harmony Mix because it has a nice clover in it. Um, and I will stop there because you are on a roll and I don't wanna slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> any comments, Paul? No, not right now. Only comment was about the work um, li limit line there. Um, could it be bring brought up a little closer to the building to avoid uh, any more disturbance to the vegetation? Let me see. 
Um, right now it's it's about it's tough getting old, huh? Um, about eighteen feet away. Would you like to see twelve? Great. You want to revise plan? Could you just put know. that on the? Yes. Want to revise yeah. plan? Okay. Tom? No. Rick? No, I'm all set. Um, <coughs> I have a question about putting in gutters and downspouts to dry wells. Yes, it's on the Does plan. It on? It's on the, noted on the plan. It's on the plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, okay, well, uh, I'm fine too. Okay. I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> any uh, comments from the public? With no comments. Would anybody like to recommend a negative three? So moved. Second. David? Aye. Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. We have it. Aye. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Do. All right. Moving along there, Ellie. Uh, well, we still get a lot to go. Okay, so this is a continued notice of intent for uh, 27 Buttercup Lane, Yarmouth, proposed raise and replace of a single family dwelling with a new septic landscape and mitigation within the buffer zone to a coastal bank and salt marsh. We had a request to continue to April 21st. Would you like somebody like to make a motion to continue? So moved. Second. David? Aye. Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. Oh, wait, aye. So we don't sign this, right? Um, no. But. All right, the next item on the agenda is a continued notice of intent for 150 South Street, AKA 181 River Street, Yarmouth, raise two single family dwellings and replace with one nine bedroom single family dwelling with a pool, new septic, redeveloped driveways and plantings, mitigation within the riverfront area, land subject to coastal storm flowage and buffer zone to a coastal bank. Um, we had a request to continue to April 21st. Really? Would someone like to make that motion? So moved. Second. Paul? Um, aye. Aye. <laughs> Pat? Aye. Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Pass it down. You feeding the dogs back there? <laughs> okay, so this is also a continued uh, notice of intent for Joseph and Dorothy Peterson on 50 Alms House Road, Yarmouth, proposed upgrade of existing septic system and installation of a new potable water well within the buffer zone to a salt marsh and bordering vegetated wetland within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, do we have, have anyone in the audience? <laughs> Don't see the Robin, but I didn't receive that was Robin. Anything. You didn't receive anything from Robin? No, I didn't. So we have no updates on that? No, so I guess the commission can just continue. Vote to continue. Or. Or. <laughs> I guess, but yeah. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess a vote to continue. Or, yeah. Would somebody like to make a vote to continue till April? Would be the 21st, right? 23rd. Yeah. Maybe just check this audience. Is there anybody in the audience for that project? I can't read the names. No, like, there's no one with their hand oh, raised. So. Uh, so, yeah, we could continue to April 21st. What do you think? Yeah, we can deny or continue. I think we should continue. Make a motion we continue until April 21st. Second. 
All right. David? Aye. Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. Okay, well, I'll vote to continue. Don't sign this. All right, now we're starting with the new notices of intent. And this is for SE 83 20, 2331, Robert and Leslie Biganu. I hope I pronounced that right. 20, uh, 12 Vermont Avenue, Yarmouth, proposed raising an raising of an existing single family dwelling and replacement with a flood zone compliant foundation within the buffer zone to a bordering vegetative wetland and within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Do we have any? Okay, come on up. Did you say it the record? Good evening, I'm Bob Vignon, 12 Vermont Ave. Thank you. Um, Do we have the existing condition? Existing first, first please, yes. All right, well, that's coming up. Uh, brief history, we bought the house in September of 2020. Um, recognizing that we'd have to do some major foundation work. Um, the house was built in the 60s and has settled. Um, and um, it, it's going to require some kind of repair. In looking into my different options, it occurred to me that I could uh, possibly raise the house out of the floodplain and fix the foundation at the same time. Um, if necessary, I can go into the steps of raising the house, but to keep it simple, the house is going to be raised in the same footprint. Mm -hmm. And um, if we move to the proposed, um, well, very quickly on the existing, on the left-hand side, we have an extension, which is the dining area. And right in front of that is an existing masonry fireplace, which will get removed during the lift. And in its place um, will be a utility room, five by eight, um, which I will show you on the proposed plan. Um, and that's the most significant and only change really to the existing footprint. Um, and then because of the house being raised five feet to gain access to the front door, um, if we could move on to the proposal. Thank you. Um, if you'll notice that there are two stone walls in front of the house that are being proposed. The lower one is going to be approximately 36 inches high and retain a flower bed. The, behind, the stone wall closest to the house is um, going to retain um, compacted gravel so that I can put a walkway up to the front door. The total footprint is 11 by 32, actually 30, I believe. Um, and that's significant because it's um, less than half of the footprint of the house. And when I raise the house, I will be adding floodgates. So, um, the actual volume of water, if there ever were serious flood, um, I'd be able to have more flow through my property than currently with the existing foundation. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, Paul? 
No, I know there's some questions about the um, the uh, height of the stone wall um, and uh, the possibility of reducing the height of that wall. Um, any thoughts on that? Well, that's why I tiered it um, to try to lessen any impact to it. Um, the bottom wall is going to be 36 inches tall. Mm -hmm. And um, that is going to allow me to place compacted fill behind it. Mm -hmm. The upper wall, while it, it shows a total of 66 inches, is actually going to be a 30 inch wall on top of compacted fill. Mm -hmm. And um, then also to try to minimize the overall height, I'm actually having a small landing on that platform at the top of the stairs with another two stairs to get me on grade with the first floor. I did anticipate that that would be something that the town might question. And that's why I tried to, with the limitations I had, I tried to make it as appealing as possible. Sure. I think there might be some further discussion about it, but thank you for those answers. You're welcome. Pat? Oh, um, was noted when we went out there that um, there's been a patio um, put out there that in the back that was not, um, it's within the 35 foot back to the wetlands. And that was uh, not permitted. And that was put in last year. And you're asking to put more of a patio in there? Would be. Um, yeah, that was definitely an oversight on my part. I didn't even consider that issue, but um, I'm not adding any more to that patio. Within that 35 foot area that shouldn't have a patio. Out of the, maybe it has to be removed. Okay. Reduced in size or pulled up, whatever. Yeah. Are you talking about the fire pit that's there? No, the, uh, the, the, the patio that was like in the back. Oh, the patio, the existing patio. Tom? Any questions? No, I haven't right now. Thank you. I can just further address um, Pat's yeah. question. That patio is going to have to come up during the construction anyway, and I just won't replace it. Right. Rick, do you have any questions? Uh, very simply, uh, the plans in both plan, the original and in the proposed plan, both show an outdoor shower. And as a I'm parentheses, REM, is that to be removed? Um, it should be removed and replaced. It's not. It, so we don't typically approve outdoor showers. We approve outdoor rinsing stations, but it's a it's a minor detail. Um, just, the only it, yeah, I have to take it off just while they raise the house. It's not going to change its location or anything. The shower itself will stay on. It's just the surround. But it's a rinsing station. It's the wording. Me. It's, it's a rinsing, rinsing station. station. Rinsing station. So yes. You might want to change the plan for the to say rinsing station. Got it now. Okay, thank you. Thought you might. Questions, <laughs> David. Um, I, I unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm out in San Diego, so I wasn't able to visit, even though I know the property well. Um, is there any plan for mitigation for the patio area? When what are you going to when you take the patio up or you put down there? I would replace it with the sod that was there before. Lawn. It's within the 35 foot, so we wouldn't want a lawn. Um, we'd want some kind of um, plantings. And I'm sure we can help you with what plantings would be, uh, uh, would be okay. Okay, I'll need, I'll need some help with that, yeah. <laughs> It was one before, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it was uh, long before, so I don't know um, raising it whether the mitigation is necessary, David. The one thing okay. I, the one thing I did notice is that the plan does not have a 35 foot setback. If you could put that on a, a plan when you change the shower to a rinsing station. Um, 
that would be greatly appreciated. Um, Kelly. Um, so the retaining wall at the front of the house is just to soften the access to the house because of the elevation, is that right? It's to create access. Right. I mean, it's quite an extensive area just for access and it is within 20 feet of the, well, it's 20 feet from the wetland. So just looking for options that reduce that footprint, maybe more a more open stairway structure that is not such a large footprint within the setback. If there's some way of reducing that setback, uh, that footprint so that it's outside of the 35 foot setback. Um, I think that would be one option or, you know, an open, an open stairway structure mm -hmm. that didn't have so much on the ground um, footprint. Um, you know, because it's in the 35 foot setback to the wetland and obviously adding more vertical walls within the, um, the flood zone. Um, and then just addressing that that area of patio, um, great if that if that could be removed as part of this project. I think that that should be shown on the plan that that's being removed. And if you did want to propose an area of patio, I think that would be okay. But that would be where it would be good to show that 35 foot line. So then you can, sh if you want to propose an area of patio after you've done the work, then you can just show an area of patio that is outside of that 35 foot. Um, if there's any space there, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's much. I mean, there, yeah, there should be room. because this area. Room. It falls away rather area. quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, then that should, so a lot of that should be outside the 35 foot. By, so by showing that line and then removing anything that is in the 35 foot, it'll still yeah. enable you to retain some patio. So I would suggest an updated plan that shows the removal of that patio inside the 35 yes. foot. Um, and then if, if um, the preference was to keep that access at the front of the house, then maybe some mitigation plantings would be appropriate um, between there and the wetland. I know there's not a lot of space, but there is some area around the house there where it's very close to the wetland that it could be supplemented with some more native plantings nice to buffer. provide a buffer to the, the wetland. So I think that's something else that could be considered on an updated plan. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Get all of our, our points. Um, I'm going to uh, read them back to you when I finish to make sure that I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, I just have one other comment on here. Is um, have we got it in downstairs shown on the plan or in the notes? I don't think yeah. it's some of those. So those should be shown on the plan as well. I'm sorry. Got us and downspouts connected to dry wells. Be shown on oh, the, the plan. existing path should be connected to dry wells. So does it have dry it does wells? Have, it does have dry it wells does, at the No, moment. no, it does not. Okay, so yeah, that path. should be included yeah. in the okay. Good catch. That's why we pay the big bucks. That's right. Well, we're not gonna want to leave. Is there anybody in the audience that has anything to say? Okay, I think I have five major points. Okay. Um, and this will tell me if I'm missing one. Um, we're going to add a rinsing station to the plan. Um, 35 foot setback should be shown. Um, remove the existing patio. Um, show a proposed location with the 35 foot setback. Um, plantings to help um, reduce the impact of the front access way and gutters to dry wells. Well, well done. Very good. Right. Now, do we want to make the motion before we receive the updated plan or? It can be done administratively, I think. Um, I Given the current circumstances, I think I would prefer a continuance just to receive the plan. Like you can close okay. the hearing, just receive the plan, then make the okay. vote to approve okay. at the so, next meeting if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So we will uh, to make a motion to continue this hearing until April twenty first. Second, second. Uh, Paul, are you Aye. 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 Tom. Aye. 
Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Can I just confirm who made the second on that motion? Hey. Hold it. Hold it. Thank you. All right, so this is a motion to uh, continue until April 21st for an updated plan, but it closes all the discussion on it. For special thank you. You're all set. Okay, thank you. And thank you. Can I, I reach out to you this week to discuss the plantings and more about the front? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is for SC 83-2033, James Sullivan, 202 Pleasant Street, Yarmouth, proposed installation of a jet ski lift to an existing licensed pier within Bass River. Easel. Is there an easel from, is there an easel? Karen? Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. For the record, again, my name is Kieran Healy, a land surveyor with the BSC Group, representing Mr. Sullivan at this property on Pleasant Street. Um, the existing pier and float system is licensed, and we are looking to um, add on a jet ski lift on the side of the um, existing pier. You'll see it in the dark lines up there on the right-hand side of the adjacent pier. It um, has two metal posts that just sit on the ground that are attached and the top end is attached to the existing pilings that are there. Um, as you can see from the photograph, that's basically a, a similar system where it just goes down when it's needed and when the uh, overnight it's lifted back up and taken out of the water and the jet skis are high and, high and dry and they do not have any effect on the, the area underneath. Um, I believe this board has approved one similar just up the river about four houses up um, on a property on Ant Edith's Road. Um, I was out there and it looked ex extremely similar to what we're proposing here. And um, other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that the commission has. Actually, before I do, um, we did talk to Waterways about this and Waterways felt that this was so minor that they did not need a filing on it. But I did reach out to spoke to Cal and he talked to the chairman, Mr. Churchill. They felt it was not necessary to have a meeting with them. Okay, thank you. Oh. Yeah, can, Kelly, maybe you can discuss the violation notices that have been issued that haven't been uh, addressed. I don't know if that has a bearing on this particular application, but. Um, so this property has received violation notices for the oversized floats and the jet skis in the past for the last two years. Um, and obviously this is addressing the jet ski floats, but when we did the site visit, there's an extra float out there. Yeah. So uh, it's. There's, there don't seem to be um, getting the message about having just the permitted floats out there. They're, they were permitted at 198 square feet and they have um, an additional 16 by six foot float. So they're at 288 square feet, um, which you know, obviously makes it difficult when yep. the commission is trying to review new proposed work at the site. To have a violation, existing violation. So I think we need to take care of that violation before we hear anything on the jet skis. I concur. So I, should we continue this uh, and will they? I guess, yeah, I mean, vote? the commission could to continue to give them the opportunity to address that. Um, if I'm correct, the, the piling was approved. I presume it was somewhere of infilling between the two floats that are there and the piling that's mm -hmm. to the south. Mm -hmm. So the float that would need to be removed is the one between the outhaul pile and the existing two floats that are to the north of it. Okay, when I was down there, I wasn't there, so I guess we'll reach out to my client and I will let him know that they can only have two floats. All right, well, we'll uh, continue this until that is taken care of. And we were down there, what, Monday? And there were three floats in there. So we obviously put them back in. All right, so I will... Uh, I will reach out to him. Let me know if we could get continue to the next meeting, and I will pass that along. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, is there an issue also about it with a um, a bench? Um, oh no, uh, no. I was just clarifying. Actually, that was a question. Um, the the lift is proposed where the bench is coming. Yes, out. one of the bench one of the benches will be removed. Be removed. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
right, Pat, do you have any more questions? No. Um, no. Rick? Thank you. David? No, I'm fine, thank you. So how long do you think it will take you to reach out to these guys? Two, two weeks, the next meeting? The next meeting will be fine, yes. I will reach out to them tomorrow and we will move on it right away. All right, so can I have a vote for a continuance to April 21st? Move. Okay, in favor? Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm still here with this. So you're doing very well. Oh, yes. she says. All right. The next item on the agenda is for uh, SE 832332, Barry Gar Gaffrin, uh, 115 River Street, Yarmouth, proposed partial raise in the elevation and parcel raise and replace of a single family dwelling within the buffer zone to a coastal bank and within riverfront area and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Good evening again, Madam Chairman. For the record, my name is Kieran Healy, a land surveyor with the BSC Group. With me tonight is Barry Gorgon, the owner of the property at um, River Street. Uh, what we're proposing to do is to, um, basically the primary reason for this work is to make it flood zone compliant. We will be lifting the house or elevating the house and uh, filling in a portion of the crawl space slash basement that's underneath there. Um, and we will be putting an addition on the rear of the house and we will be modifying the porch in the front of the house. Um, the area does fall within um, the 200 foot river front. Um, the front portion of the building, the work will be done right at the outer edges of the 100 foot to coastal bank. And um, the site itself will be improved because of the flood zone compliance. We are also proposing that section in green up on the north side that you'll see um, uh, near River Street as a mitigation for the work that we are doing. Um, other than that, I'm glad to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Paul? Yeah, there, there's some questions about the vegetation. Maybe we could talk about that, about, um, about possibly increasing the mitigation efforts. Um, it's, I guess, suggested at one to one now, and uh, maybe there should be a consideration of two to one, um, and especially the mitigation closest to the river. Um, another comment: There's been significant removal of vegetation on the on the lot, resulting in no vegetation remaining except lawn. So, is there any any um, thoughts on that? There was no polls because that's pretty much the way it's been for the last. So yes, we, we yeah. had the vegetation removed around the property when we had three septic systems done. It was our, the, we like to see vegetation, right? What's that? We like to see a lot of um, diversified vegetation in some of these projects. Okay. So, okay. what are you recommending uh, that, that we go from one to one to two to one? Correct. Uh, is two to one the requirement of the town? Pardon me? Is two to one the requirement? I don't remember. One is the riverfront area requirement. Okay. The mitigation for the expanded footprint. Okay. You like two to one. Pat? And, and just, uh, you know, a, a little diversity in the amount of different plants you put in. Okay. Tom? No, everybody's covered it, I think. Not a, really a purview, but I wonder if the applicant would consider a uh, alternative septic system for this project, but given that we are right on the edge of the river, we would uh, we'd have some serious improvement in the amount of nitrogen going into Bass River, which would benefit everyone. The, the, there was a brand new septic system. There is, yeah, yeah which we can get you some information. I, I suspect, Misty. They just replaced the septic. Oh, it's, yeah, we it just is replaced a, them, yes. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Title fives, they don't work, unfortunately, but no, they don't. thank you. I would I would respectfully disagree, Mr. Bishop, in that the 99% uh, of all um, pathogens and nitrogen is removed in that first two to three feet. There are certain states that only require two feet of separation between the bottom of the system and the groundwater. Massachusetts requires five feet. So that, you know, filters a lot more than other states. 
And even though the river is close, um, the river is tidal and you don't have that same type of settling of nitrogen and so on that you would have in other parts of the river, even more upriver than this. Okay. There's a serious amount of flushing that happens in that millions of gallons of water goes through that river every day. I hear that, Mr. Healy, but I, I can tell you that the MEP report identified that the um, Bass River in total needs a 46% reduction in nitrogen. So anything we can do to help that is certainly what we want to work towards. Thank you. David, any questions? Uh, no questions. Thank you. Um, just in addition to the comments that were made about the mitigation plantings, I just wanted to show the areas just so you can see the extent of the, um, the vegetation removal. So, I understand that this septic work was done in this area, but all of the vegetation around here has also been removed over the last uh, few years. Well, the, the septics were in three different locations. Is there a septic system along this side of the property? Yes, yes. And the septic system on both sides of the house, and if you go, if you go back to the first picture, Kelly, it, 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 if you see two vehicles there, right behind the vehicle, you see another giant vegetated area. Mm -hmm. When we bought the house, we thought that was a giant vegetated area. It was a big dirt mound. Um, so that, would that be? It? Outside right the there. Front area anyway. I I'm thinking more in this location. Well, that so that right there is a giant tree. That 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 tree actually just came down in the last storm, and we yeah. And but all of the vegetation up the side of the house here. That that was removed when they did the side septic, in the leaching field, which is also wraps around that backyard in the corner. So I guess I would just suggest that given that that work was done in the riverfront area, then that vegetation should have been replaced. It was jurisdictional under those regulations. The, so oh well, the leaching system it, it, it was in the backyard. Uh, we've got the plan, I guess. Is the, is the septic system shown on the... The septic system is shown on my plan, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this area here doesn't have any... Oh, yeah, see what the tank is. Yep, there's a septic, oh, that's, that's the, the yep. There? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I would just have suggested that 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 would have been covered under the uh, river mm -hmm. regulations. Yeah. But um, I think if there is um, the two to one mitigation, which is required under the riverfront regulations for expanded footprint within the riverfront area, then and that that vegetation be um, replaced along the, the river front. side of the property rather than the side of the property where it would be most beneficial, then I think that that would go a ways to, to rectifying the, the issue of, of lost vegetation within that uh, that resource area. So you're saying two to one along the, the, the riverside? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would need a new plan for that. So so basically, just, just so I'm clear, the, the spot that's shown for the mitigation now in the green, mm -hmm. we want to do, it would be the same area of that, but across the road, is that um, well, I mean, certainly where it's two to one that that's what I say is that's one to one now, right? Yeah, so, so you want two to one. So basically be roughly the same square that, footage. Yeah. It's one of the plans shows the tree too. Yeah. Um, the, the regulations require that the mitigation be as close to the river as possible. So either I don't you own both of these properties, right? So yes. I guess there is the option of it being on the river side of the well, road. Well, no, what, what I was saying is if, if where it's one to one, that's one to one that's shown there. If could we do one to one there and one to one across the river? Does it all have to be done in the oh, same place? Are there are the can we do it in separate, you know? So you're saying keep this here, but also yes. put the other and then do the one to one over there also. So yeah, the, in the turn, it would be two to one. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see more of a uh, the vegetation put on the plan that's on that riverside because I know there are trees there and it doesn't show anything on the plan at this point. So, um, so you're saying show the vegetation that in this area and then show t uh, the half of the mitigation on this part of the property and then the remaining uh, half of the mitigation would be in this area on the river yeah. side of the structure. And when we had done, we, we planned to put a tree back on the front. Yeah, we love that tree. We were, we were heartbroken when it, when it broke. Mm -hmm. correct, so that would be correct me if I'm wrong, the, the green area should, that I thought they were claiming is mitigation shown as lawn and that's the last thing we want to see there. Uh, it's lawn at the moment right lawn at the moment yes but we're going to modify yeah, I so think there is a there was a planting list up here i think it's low bush blueberry and bearberry which is ground cover and low shrubs 
Thank you very much. But we also want a um, <coughs> variation of oh, plants in there instead of just those. So with the with the two to one mitigation, if we just increase the diversity of plants of different heights and um, and species as well. Is there anyone in the audience that has anything to say? Uh, Please step up to the podium questions. and state your name for the record. Uh, John Lawrence. You can go to that um, podium, podium there, please. There. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I, um, I'm in a butter on 117, and uh, the amount of vegetation that's been removed from that property has been pretty striking. Um, and the, in one case, where he says that it, the vegetation was a dirt mound. It's actually probably a hundred year old <coughs> growth of uh, um, peach plums. Um, <clears throat> and there's been a lot of clearing in the front, uh, on the riverfront side of the property. Uh, in addition on the plans, I think it shows that the uh, raising and elevation is also gonna include a wraparound staircase to the porch. That seems a little excessive. Aren't you really increasing your footprint? As opposed to just having a couple of stairs to, to get into one side or the other of the porch. Uh, and then you brought up the three septic systems that were removed. That's not actually accurate. Um, there's a 500 to 1,000 gallon septic system or cesspool. It's still in my driveway that was supposed to have been removed. Um, during their purchase of the property. And it was actually stipulated on the purchase and sale agreement. So I would ask that uh, this approval be postponed until uh, that, <coughs> that cesspool has been removed and remediated properly. Because if they're not gonna <coughs> follow through on their first permit, there's nothing to indicate they're gonna follow through on the second one. Questions from the board? Yeah, I have a question. Oh. Are you saying that there's a cesspool like the concrete thing is sitting in your in a driveway area? Or yeah, I have some pictures of it. I think um, Kelly has a copy of some of the photographs. That's interesting. There's a large um, bricked um, cesspool. <clears throat> it's probably six feet in diameter, about ten feet deep, and the cover of which is. Most of the septic tank is in my driveway, which runs parallel to the property, to the back property, 117. And uh, when asked if it had been removed back when they first bought it, I was assured that, yeah, it had been removed, um, even though the earth around that area was not disturbed, it was still hard packed sand. And uh, the next, the following year, <clears throat> I had, uh, there was some uh, overlap between the natural gas service that ran on their property. And so I uh, called up National Grid and had them run a new line. And during the process of running the new line, they uncovered the removed cesspool that hadn't been removed. Well, probably some of those are not within our purview, but it's interesting. It's that Can I just say, too, that I watched them remove a tank from his driveway. And then someone from the Board of Health came out and and was there and looked at it. And the job the job got signed off by the by the Board of Health. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it was signed off by the Board of Health. But when I uh, contacted the uh, uh, person who was out there to look at it, she's no longer here. Uh, she said she never put eyes on the removal of the tank. It wasn't she a female, it was a male. The uh, contractor's word for it. It was a male that was there from the town. No, it wasn't a female. At least that that's who was there when I I, I saw a male. Okay, but right where they had dug in your in your driveway. When I brought and it when, to when, when when you brought that up to me before, I, I mentioned it to our, yeah. our yeah. septic yeah. contractor. Okay, he gentlemen. mentioned that it could have been some other gentlemen, tank at some other time. This isn't open other... for an argument between yeah, you I, two. I'm sorry. This is <laughs> the commission I'm here. sorry. Um, if I could stated Mr. something Jim. on the record, so it is possible that there might have been two tanks there, and both gentlemen are right in that right. one was removed and one might still be there. So it is possible that could be the case that we find out with the older properties that there's more than one septic in the ground, as there was with this one. We know that there was at least three. 
So it might that might be the case, and both gentlemen may be right. Okay. Yeah, I guess the, my issue is that having been notified that the tank was not removed, both Barry and also the town, they've done nothing to fix it. If I might, Ellie, this is David. Property, John. <laughs> it's on your property. <laughs> Excuse me. This. Ellie, this is David. Is this even within our purview? This little argument. No, and if I, it isn't, can we move? Can we move ahead? Yes, we're going to move ahead. This There's this some, is between. Sorry. Is a, go ahead. Sorry, there's just another hand raise in the audience. When oh, you're, whenever you're raise? ready. Okay. Um, it is a, a civil. At this point, we opened it up for the questions that he brought to us. I don't know if there's anybody else who has a question on the board. Okay. And can I also uh, one part that may not be uh, is the stairs, the wraparound stairs. Mm -hmm. That's, that? that's increasing the footprint of the house by whatever the run is of those three yep. stairs. Because of raising it. So that would have to be. So Madam Chairman, um, can I make a suggestion that we continue this yes. until a new plan is presented to us? Yes, I, I think that's a good, good suggestion. For the other public. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is there um, anybody else in the public who would like to say anything? I've allowed Thank Kate you, to, to speak. Kate. Yes, hello. Um, I represent a family who is an abutting neighbor. Um, and we would like to find out when the proposed uh, construction will be, will happen, what the hours of the construction might be, and sort of a lot, lot more questions, but we'd like to know who to address these questions to. Hey, could you uh, state your name and the property address you're at? Yes, uh, my name is Kate Grinberg. And I live at 121 River Street, a budding neighbor to the south. Okay. And, thank you. Okay. Um, and we, we have several questions about the project. I'm not sure now is the time to ask all the detailed questions, but essentially, how many, if any, extra bedrooms? There's already quite a lot of traffic coming in and out from the driveway. Um, will there be additional, um, will there be a lot of additional um, traffic as a result of this? And also, is anything being done? I don't think it's in the plan, but um, to reduce the, the lighting, the security lighting around the house uh, at night, which is already um, um, a, a disturbance um, to, to our side of the uh, fam uh, to our family and other environmental impacts. I, again, I would I would um, just ask for a, a forum for, to be able to ask specific questions that it don't get into the weeds <laughs> at this meeting. Um, that that the lighting is really not in our purview uh, to oversee on this and the plans it states that they're raising the house but they're not adding any more bathrooms or, sorry bedrooms oh okay so um, as far as the lighting goes that's something you would have to discuss with the, the gentleman who owns the house sounds good okay thank you very much oh uh, well the question about the, the the plan the schedule would be something I'm interested in well, at this point, uh, it's being continued, so we don't have a set schedule. Oh, that's right. Of course. That's right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions from the audience? I don't see any. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to continue? For so, April 22nd, 21st. 20, 21st, with a new plan that those mitigation. Those mitigation and uh, addresses the, the um, larging, uh, the larger footprint with the steps on the porch, because that's a good point. That does add more to the uh, footprint. Okay. Second. Um, a motion, right? We're in the middle motion. of a motion. I did the motion. I'll second, David. Okay, further discussion? Yeah. Um, Could you step to the podium, please? Oh, sure. Um, the tank that was abandoned in my property was full, had not been pumped out. The other tank during the three septic removal was not pumped out. Um, so you mentioned before, Rick, about nitrate levels. Um, so 
you know, that's that's an issue, right? So if you leave a couple hundred gallons of sewage and abandon it, that's really not a good way to do a Title V system. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a health department question, uh, leaving a, a non-pumped um, cesspool or whatever is there. It's not really, it's outside of our, our responsibility. Yeah. But I, I guess think it's a very good point. Approving this, this build without that being done. Okay, we, we, we've, uh, we have a motion in to continue this hearing. So there'll be another opportunity for us to have a discussion about this. Great. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, in favor, Paul? Aye. 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 Okay, so this will be continued until April 21st. Thank you, members. Thank you very much. Yep. The next item on our agenda is SE 832336, Robert and Deborah Hosian. Sorry if I mutilated that. Uh, 21 Crest Circle, Yarmouth, proposed raise and replace of an existing single family dwelling and associated site work within the riverfront area and buffer within the buffer zone to a coastal bank and salt marsh. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. For the record, again, my name is Kieran Healy, BSC Group, representing the owners who are with me tonight, uh, Dev and Bob Hosepian. Um, we are looking to uh, move and replace this existing dwelling that's at 21 Crest Circle. Um, we are looking to um, push the house closer to the street and away from the wetlands and the coastal bank. Um, the footprint, the majority of the footprint that's been increased is towards the roadway. We are looking to um, reduce the size of the existing deck and uh, remove the existing shed, all that were close to the top of coastal bank. And um, you'll see the plantings that I've got proposed. Uh, the lighter plantings are ones that were done um, last year. And the darker ones, darker plantings are ones that we are proposing in accordance with, the, uh, with the, this project. Um, we are replacing the existing septic system uh, trying to keep it as 100 feet away from the um, buffer, to, 100 foot buffer the salt marsh. And we are making the flood, the house flood zone compliant. Um, the back corner of the existing building is right at the flood zone line. So by moving the house forward and upward, we will um, make it more flood zone compliant. Uh, there is a walkout at the existing dwelling and there will be a proposed walkout in the, the new dwelling. Um, we have proposed dry wells to pick up any gutters and um, the uh, driveway will be uh, moved to the right-hand side more from what it is right now. Um, the septic tank, as I mentioned, septic system will be replaced. And um, other than that, it'll be just a more flood zone compliant building that we're proposing out there. Thank you. Paul, any questions? No questions right now. Which is we were out there looking at seeing the plants that were put in last year. Make sure you get a silt fence or something along there to protect them during this construction. Give them a better chance to survive. They look good. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Tom? I'm all set. Thank you. Rick? All set. David? Mute. There we go. Couldn't unmute for a minute. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, first of all, looking at the plans before I left, I noticed I couldn't find a 35 foot setback on the plan. Um, wondering if one could be added, if unless I missed it, which wouldn't be the first time. Um, I believe the deck itself is within the 35 feet and wondering if that could be pushed back. And what kind of driveway material are you using for the new driveway? I could respond. Um, the 35 foot buffer is depicted on the plan. It pretty much goes right through the middle of the building, uh, right in the middle where you've got proposed three bedroom dwelling, top of foundation, elevation 20.3. 
the line that touches that 20 pound tree is the 35 foot buffer to the mm -hmm. coastal bank. Um, the, the building, the current building is closer to the um, top of coastal bank and we are moving the, both the deck and the house away from the coastal bank. It is a tight site. There's not a whole lot we can do with, you know, we, we, there's no way we can get out of the 35 foot buffer. There isn't that kind of land here that that can be accomplished. So we're looking to, you know, try and pull things back away from the coastal bank to improve the situation to the best of our abilities. And the driveway would be back up. I think it's stone. Um, the driveway would be a stone material. It would not be by two minutes concrete. Okay, I'd like to see that on the plan to, so there's no questions later on. Thank you. All right. I, I had one more question, Mr. Uh, um, the proposed deck is actually touching the top of Coastal Bank. Um, have some concern, concerns about that. You know, we like to see, you know what we you know, typically like to see, but touching it is, is asking a lot, I think. The common deck is into the coastal bank, so we pulled it back to get out of the coastal bank, even though it's not something that we would normally ask for in this board if it was a normal situation. But the fact that we are currently within the setback by five feet, we're pulling it completely out of that existing coastal bank and getting it off the coastal bank, which, which is where the pilings are right now. So it is substantial improvement from what's there. Um, obviously, we wouldn't be coming to you asking for this if it was a vacant land. But, uh, in this particular situation, it seems to make sense to us because we're getting out of the coastal bank entirely. And then mitigating all that area and stabilizing the coastal bank. On the... Um I guess it would be on the east side with that little bump out there that extends onto the 50 foot buffer. Is there any way you can pull that back to just get more out of that uh, area? The well, that little area there is approximately three square feet. But if you follow the line over, the primary portion of the building is, is obviously much more than three square feet. So, um, you know, we just we just can't move that house any closer to the street and keep the size that deserving of it. Excuse me. <clears throat> you know, do you think we can just reduce the size of the uh, deck just a little bit? Twenty five feet is pretty pretty good size deck. If we can reduce that a little bit, so it's not actually touching the top of the bank. Um, I mean, would it be okay to? basically chamfer the corner so that we get, you know, we'll say three feet off the coastal bank in that area. It's not a lot I understand, but there's not a whole lot we can do. It's the only, because of the ground levels that are there, yeah. you can't yeah. have, you know, you, you're not going to go outside the building and go down to the lower level. You're going to have that deck that you need to use. Listen, just, I'm just thinking that 25 feet is, it's a pretty generous sized deck. Pretty big deck. You know, it's, you could re reduce that by five feet and, Give us a little breathing room there. Well, the 25 feet, I'm not seeing where the 25 feet is. Well, so I'm reading the scale wrong. It's 25 long, but it's only, it's not that tall. Yeah. It's, oh, it's a 20 scale, and I'm going from the corner of the house to the corner of the deck, and it's uh, 25 is what I read. Am I missing? Am I, if I'm making a mistake, I, I look at the wrong plan. I don't have a ruler. It's a 10 scale. Oh, it's a 10 scale. 10 scale. You guys always doing 20s. What are you doing to me here? <laughs> I was going to say, where'd you get 25? You know, I just, <laughs> it's only habitual. a 10 scale. Well, five years, 12 I kid that I can tell up who the engineering firm is, by the way, things are staked. And I said, you guys always do 20. I didn't even look. <laughs> the lot is so small and so Disregard. tight. Disregard. <laughs> it's only because the lot is so small and so tight that we have a 10 scale. Yeah, it is 25 feet on the 20 scale. <laughs> Got me. Okay. Uh, Kelly, any questions or any remarks? Sorry. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay, so the new building, I, I'm, I had to review this under the riverfront regulations. The new building is being moved back uh, to the edge of the coastline, which is an improvement over existing conditions. Um, but the footprint is also being expanded within the riverfront area. Um, the 30 
five foot setback line that's missing is the 35 foot setback line to the um, salt marsh, um, which is um, obviously pertinent for work that's um, being done within that um, buffer zone. Um, the deck is, as, as has been discussed, is 26.3 uh, feet from the salt marsh, which is within the 35 foot. Um, the structure is set back 38 feet, if I'm correct. I think that was correct. Um, so the, if think back a little while, we issued the COC for the existing house for this property and the original deck was built much larger than what was permitted under that plan. Mm -hmm. And so when the commission reviewed it at the COC request, they didn't wish to cause additional disturbance by requiring that the deck be rebuilt so long after it was constructed, but it was significantly larger than what was approved. Um, and that's when the property owner was required to, the property owner at the time was required to add back all of the 35 foot vegetation that had been removed. Um, yeah, recall that. Yeah, when the construction of the house took place. So I feel like now would be a really good opportunity to pull back that unpermitted deck further towards the 35 foot setback. Um, in terms of the riverfront area regulations, the total riverfront area on the property is 11,491 square feet. So 10% of that would be 1,149 square feet. The regulations allow up to 10% disturbance or current disturbed area, whichever is greater. So the current structures and pavement um, in the existing conditions for this site is 2,348 square feet. The proposed disturbed area, including the structures and the driveway, are 2,948 square feet. So that's an additional 600 square feet of hardscape within the riverfront area. Um, additional expansion of footprint should be towards the, um, the boundary of the riverfront area. And there is significant expansion of footprint actually within the 100 foot and more towards the, the river in this instance. So I'm not sure that it really meets that regulation, that performance standards for riverfront. Two to one mitigation for 600 square feet of additional hardscape would be um, 1200 square feet. And there's only 600 square feet of mitigation proposed. Um, so under 10.58A, improvement over existing conditions, the house has been moved back slightly by five feet. Um, it does appear um, maybe difficult with the septic system, but there is the ability to move it a little closer to the road. Maybe if the septic system was on the other side of the water line where the existing septic tank is, I don't know if that's feasible from a technical standpoint, but certainly could be part of the alternatives analysis. Um, the structure is also, the footprint is, a, um, significantly larger than the existing. So the alternatives analysis should address the increase in footprint um, as well. Um, storm 10.58B uh, under the riverfront uh, stormwater management uh, construction period, uh, silt fence, I think is including, it's stated as a waddle, but I think given the slope of the site, an actual silt fence should be called out. Dry wells are proposed. Drive main material is not called out, but um, that can be added to the plan. I understand it's going to be stone. Um, what's going to happen in the area of the old driveway? Is that going to be returned to vegetation or lawn? Um, under 10.58C um, requires that the property the structure be no closer to the river and that um, performance standard has been met, though it's based on the unpermitted deck location. Uh, 10.58D, proposed work and expansion of structures should be outside the riverfront area or away from the river. Um, that is not met. The structure has been enlarged within the 100 foot riverfront area and mitigation is only proposed at one to one. 10.58E, uh, it shouldn't exceed existing footprint or 10% and that has not been met. Um, 600 square foot of additional footprint mitigation is only proposed at one to one instead of two to one. Um, additional fill creates additional disturbance but hasn't been included in the calculations. Um, those areas could be revegetated with the mitigation plantings, which would um, provide a benefit there. Um, so the plan as proposed does not meet the riverfront regulations. And then just the decision on the variance request to the 35 foot setback. That's all I have. <laughs>
sorry. That's the most you've ever had, I think. <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's riverfront projects are just yeah, exhausting. Yeah. Um, Kelly, just to clarify one thing, I sure. I thought it was with the riverfront, it was ten percent of up to five thousand square feet. Uh, ten. My understanding Whichever is ten percent was... or existing footprint. Oh. Let me double check that though. Because we've always used five thousand square feet. I thought that was for. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll double check, but my understanding was uh, here we go. Redevelopment. Proposed work shall not exceed the amount of degraded area provided that the proposed work may alter up to 10% if the degraded area is less than 10% of the riverfront area, except in accordance with F and G, which is mitigation. So it doesn't talk about 5,000. I don't know if that's for a new development. If, you, if you're able to find a reference to that, I don't see it in, the, in that section. Well, the, the biggest thing is, I guess, is the mitigation of two to one. Um, mm -hmm. There is an area to the behind the building where we can increase the mitigation. I don't think there's a full 600 square feet there, but we can add mitigation on the sides as well, just giving us enough space to get around the building. But to the north more, uh, Kelly, there is some space. Um, just if you move the cluster up and a little bit to your left right there. Yeah, right there, there's an area there that could be infilled. Um, again, it's not 600 square feet, but between that area and the area where you fall swell over the dry well, we could come up with 600 square feet there to give it a two to one mitigation. Now, is there the ability to have, I know you have to meet the setbacks for the setback, but is the ability to have the septic over here so that you can move the whole structure this way? Well, the, the septic system right now is outside the 100 foot buffer of the salt marsh. The leaching area and we were trying to come trying to keep it as far away from the resource as possible you'll notice how the mm, the line goes right through the line kind of goes in an angle to that, the that's the, the leaching field has to be 100 yes feet right so but what if the, the tank itself is over here oh but this has to be right. 20 feet setback right yes okay and yeah. it's uh, 10 feet from the road okay right. so that, that's why it's in that position that was the the best fit for the septic system and everything the house came partially from the septic system location so then the only other alternative, which should be included in the alternative analysis is the size of the structure because it's being significantly expanded over what's currently there. Okay. So you're proposing to uh, continue. continue this with a... Um... Um, yeah, I mean, I just think that those items need to be more thoroughly addressed in terms of alternatives analysis and finding additional yeah. areas for mitigation. Yeah. And then, if, yeah, just adding the, the other 35 um, foot line and the pervious driveway. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that has anything they would like to speak? I don't see any hands raised. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Oh, <laughs> at the audience. Uh, just if you could clarify what uh, two to one means in mitigation when you're talking. State your name, for, state oh, your name for John the question. Lawrence. Um, so the two to one is the, the riverfront regulations is for a um, proposed expansion of hardscape um, that you're required to do two to one mitigation. So for every square foot of expansion of hardscape, you need to provide twice as much or two feet of mitigation like plantings, native plantings. Okay, and hardscape is like for percolation and... and... Hardscape, so any structure, pavement, driveway, uh, driveway patios, any of that kind of hardscape. Oh. Now, does that include patios that are just on crushed stone? Yeah, that would be included as hardscape. Hardscape, okay. Even though it's got drainage? Yeah. Thank you. Just to clarify, could crushed stone would be considered hardscape as well? Yeah, it's, so. Under the riverfront, it's considered hardscape because it's considered to be then degraded area. So even yeah. though it has slightly more value in terms of stormwater, it's still degraded area rather than undisturbed vegetation. So anything basically that's not undisturbed vegetation is degraded area. All right, uh, so would two weeks be enough to look at this or do you want to uh, take it a month out? Um, two weeks should be fine. Okay. Could I have a motion to continue this till April 21st? So moved. Second. Uh, Paul? 
Aye. Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Okay, so this is moved until August, April 21st. Thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you. Good. Okay, the next item on the agenda is SE 832334, Nino Mikgosi for Sweetheart Creek, uh, 355 Great Island Road, Yarmouth, proposed rebuild of an existing pier, ramp, and float system within the land containing shellfish and land under the ocean. We had a request to continue <laughs> to April 21st. <clears throat> Could I have a motion for that? No move, Tom. Second, Pat. Uh, Pat? Aye. <coughs> Excuse me. Tom? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Rick? Aye. David? Aye. And that's continued to April 21st. And the next one is 369 Great Island Road. Just Proposed modification for a pier, uh, SE 83, Proposed modification to a pier, ramp and float system within land under the ocean, land containing shellfish and land subject to coastal storm flowage. And we had a request to continue to April. Okay. I have a motion for that. So moved. Second. Aye. 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 Continued until April 21st. Are you sure you won't be here for that? Uh, what's up with that? <laughs> I think I she called all these people. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on to SE 83-2337, Frederick and Don Brum Brundage at uh, 34 Lindale Road, Yarmouth, proposed raise and replace a single family dwelling and associated site work within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. Dave Flaherty representing the, um, the Brundages. And it's a, uh, I'm happy to have returned to the commission, although on the other side. Um, this is uh, basically just a simple raise and replace. The only resource area, well, there is no resource area specifically, but it is in a FEMA flood zone, AE 11. Um, the. Uh, this is uh, 34 Lindale Road. It contains a one-story dwelling and the property is a corner lot and is bordered, bordered by a residential homes on the south and east. And uh, the, again, the only resource area considered for this filing is the FEMA flood zone AE 11. And uh, they'll raise and replace a single family dwelling. No vegetation clearing will occur for the new dwelling as it is generally in the same location as the existing dwelling. The septic system will remain in its current location as it is a newer Title V. Um, the dwelling will be flood zone compliant with less than 12 inches of fill required to do so. The driveway elevation will remain the same and a portion of the existing bituminous driveway will be removed and replaced with crushed shells. Building coverage will be reduced from 1,395 square feet to 1,309 square feet. Not much, but it's, uh, it's still a, a a better situation. Uh, there'll be a line of straw wattles to be installed to contain any dry runoff from excavated materials. Roll-off containers will be located in the existing bituminous driveway and will be removed regularly. Debris will be picked up on a daily basis and the site will remain safe and clean. Furthermore, dry uh, gutters leading to dry wells will be installed. So, if you have any questions, uh, green cards will be coming tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Stone is in Florida, the uh, the original person representing the, the Brundages. So, uh, any questions from the board? Paul? No, no, thank you. Okay. It's going to have a pervious drive away. Um, part, it, part of it's going to be removed to be impervious, be crushed shell. There'll be some of it, I think, probably near the street side, to control um, uh, storm storm water. But for, for the most part, most of it will be uh, removed and replaced with crushed shell. Tom? No, good to see you there. Good to see you too, yeah. Tom. All, right. All set, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rick. David? All set, thank you. 
Any uh, people in the audience? Would you go to the podium and state your name and your address? My name is Elaine Costigan and I live at 30 Lindale Road right next to the property. Okay. And I just want to comment on the fact that um, I want to support this because the house has been abandoned for three years and it's a shambles. So All right, let's go. me down for, you know, the neighborhood is very, I represent the neighborhood watch on the street. So they wanted me to come tonight and say something about it. And the fact that it's going to be smaller, not bigger, even though it's a small amount, I, we appreciate all the efforts that the, the Van Bridges are trying to do now. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's so nice. So is that 30 Lindale, you said? Yep. Is that 30? Uh, that being said, we'll have them up. Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Get a vote? Yeah, aye. <laughs> Three time folks. Usually, 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 usually the chairman does not vote unless it's a. Oh, so you not voting when you're not voting? I bring the recording you will be yes. Maybe I just need to go back and change those numbers. <laughs> okay. So we're down to certificate of compliances. SE 8321 8955 Lane. Really? I recommend issuing the certificate. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Paul. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Tom. Aye. Rick. Aye. David. Aye. Aye. So moved. <laughs> we missed Robin. We talked about it. Yeah, exactly. We, we went by that. So if we get to um, the two pages signed for that order of conditions, the last one that came down. That one? Oh, that so one. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, you have. Well, there are two. two uh, yeah, I signed two on that. I don't. I think so. I think it is. Let me show you. Yeah. Okay, a certificate of compliance for SE 8313. 98 12 powers lane recommend issuing the certificate of compliance for SC 83 13 98. Can I have a motion? So moved, David. Second. Um, okay, Paul. Aye. Pat? Aye. Um, Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Okay. That one comes down. Uh, certificate of compliance. That should be done with all the good ones. That's all right. It makes it easier for me to record the text. Okay. <laughs> uh, certificate of compliance for SE 83 1851 16 Marsh Point Road in Yarmouth. Um, this one was, I think, I think fine, but I will just give you the heads up that um, this was mostly in basis management work that was completed and there was some planting done in the disturbed area where the invasives were removed. The plan did indicate that there was going to be additional plantings up to the 100 foot buffer, but these don't seem to be in place, but there is a good vegetated buffer up to what's probably about 75 feet. Um, so there is a good buffer zone there that is established. So I recommend issuing the CSC for this one. I agree. Okay. Is that moving it? Are you making the motion? Moved. So moved, okay. Second. Second. Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. What'd you do? Drop it? It's coming up. All right. Is that one? What are you doing? Hey, okay. Kelly, I sent you a message in. Um, Chat if you just one look. Only one messages in chat. I forgot uh -oh. to just stay. 
the I'm the bottom one. Okay, thank you. I'm just, we need to remember to disable the chat because it's distracted. Well, you can't, I can't monitor it during the meeting and I don't think it's really appropriate. So we'll have to remember that for future reference. All right. Okay. So a certificate of compliance for SE 83, 2273, uh, 229 and 231 Route 6A in Yarmouth. Recommend issuing the COC for SE 83, 2273. A motion? So moved. Second? Second. It's good to see this move. We've been yeah, we've been going around this for a while. Absolutely. Aye. Paul? Aye. 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 Tom? Aye. Rick. David? Aye. Okay. You're slack. As well as me. Okay, on to the other business. So, oh, um, he was here for yeah, the item already got continued, so I guess that's yeah. up to the commission how they want to proceed. The items already, which one was that? Um, Arms House Road. Arms House Road, yes. We did, we continued, we continued that one. We want to reopen that? Do we want to reopen it? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, all right, so okay. we'll reopen it. Good evening. Mm -hmm. That was Mr. Wilcox this evening. It is. It has been six weeks since I have heard from my client. I still have not heard from him. Well, I've heard from them a lot, and they keep saying they're trying to reach you. I didn't so. say I haven't heard from every realtor on Cape Cod on this thing, and I haven't talked to every other contractor and, and what other methodologies are available to them, but my client has not communicated to me one way or the other and has not expressed his uh, his desire to the alternatives that we have given him. I, I did receive, I, I was off Cape most of uh, yesterday and I did not receive Kelly's email until after I got back in the office after three o'clock today. So I, uh, I do have some things to address to Kelly. Um, when we did go out there, there is one on the immediate left side of the structure, there's a choke cherry that has a branch which would be in the way of getting to the back of the property if they were to replace the well where it, where it is existing. Than that there might be some slight trimming of trees in that area and shrubbery. Um, the right hand side is is completely unaccessible to get down to the back. The the BBW comes uh, as close, and we figured we that's the reason why we had done straw bales on that side for work limit. We can extend the work limit for the well construction. Um, out and around to cover it, it's still going to be way, 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 way too close to the to the salt marsh as well as to the BVW. I, I understand the normal regulation is at least 25 feet. Um, if they were to move the well to the front of the house and put a holding tank instead, which is what the uh, agent from the Board of Health had recommended that we do. Uh, we, we avoid all of this discussion. But I need to hear from Mr. Peterson what he wants to do with this thing. I, well, I know what he wants to do. He wants to close it. Mm, and, and I mean, close on the property. He doesn't care if he gets an order of conditions or anything else. He just wants to sell. He doesn't understand that there's a process to go through. So right now we're still in a I continuance. Would I would suggest you you have really no, uh, and I have no other choice other than to request a, re a continuance. And yeah, that's what we had, that's, that's what, what we, we decided. So 
Yeah. So the, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if anything's going to be achieved in the next two weeks. I mean, the commission can at least, I mean, I guess it's been continued now. So. Right. Okay. We haven't voted to open it again. So. Okay. okay. I was addressing your bullet points. That was down to number six. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. If you want to um, put those to us in writing so that we have those for, for me to distribute to the commission for the next hearing then. Okay. Then that would be useful. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice evening. You too. Thank you. So on to other business. Um, <laughs> approval of the meeting minutes of uh, three March 3rd and March 17th. Mr. Minutes. Well, as far as uh, March 3rd is concerned, uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the minutes be accepted as written. Second. Okay, all in favor, Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Tom? Aye. Rick? Aye. David? Aye. Uh, as trans far as March, well, go, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. That's the 17th. Go no. ahead. Uh, St. Patty's Day. <clears throat> uh, as far as March 17th is concerned, if you turn to page four, uh, there's, there's a uh, typo misunderstanding in the third paragraph, but that can be easily uh, uh, corrected. So the proposed bill? Yeah. As, as far as uh, number nine on page four is concerned, Commissioner Durkin recused himself from the following item, which was 122 Exeter Road. And rather than Exeter Road uh, being voted on seven to zero, it was six to zero because I was Thank you. Uh, not there. Uh, Where uh, do we have it that you recused? No, you do not. Okay. All right. So if we put No, that... I suggest that we put it in. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and then on page five, number 11, uh, we certainly want to give credit to the gentleman who does so well on this commission. Mr. Bishop recused himself from the following item. <laughs> Mr. Bishop was the property owner, so... Uh, that would make sense. Yeah. And to the best of my knowledge, that, that is it. And I suggest that we approve them with the minor corrections that are made. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Hmm? Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, Paul? Aye. 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 Um, Rick? Aye. David? <laughs> Hi. Good time. She's done That's such a, a great job. job. No, I haven't. No, okay. well, you've done a wonderful job well, tonight. Um, okay, so Madam Chair, may I may I interrupt just for one one quick statement? Can we do that under other business? It's pertinent to this next item. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, recognize our outgoing uh, conservation administrator. He's been, we have been so fortunate as a commission and the town of Yarma to have had her. I agree. When, I when agree. What's the last date? Um, the how many hours, how many minutes? <laughs> April 14th. April 14th? Yeah. This, this is it. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Is it? So, on to business. Who is to take over business. for you? Uh, oh, so we have to talk about on to other business as a transition to the new conservation administrator. <laughs> so here we go. But that's so, reasonably anticipated, Ellie. Hmm? So this that's is an yeah, this is an agenda item is the transition yeah. to the new. Well, that's under yeah. under business, other business. Yeah, yeah. other business. Yeah. There's yeah. other business, other business. <laughs> but this is an item under other business. Um, so they did interview three candidates for the position last week and um, they have not named somebody yet oh. for that position. Who's so in I, charge of, uh, well, we have not had any, any. Um, so David um, was part of the interview process. Oh, good. And um, good. Sarah, our HR director, the town administrator and Karen Green all interviewed. So those four, I think, that, is that right? David? Yes, can I, can I add something uh, in general terms, I promise? The, the three excellent candidates. That's as much as I can say about them. 
Um, we spent an hour interviewing each one. Afterwards, we discussed our candidates. I gave my strong opinion. Um, and then um, in the end, I believe, and Kelly can correct me if I'm wrong, in the end, it's uh, the town administrator's um, final say. And uh, I, I haven't heard much about it since then. That's it. That's all I can add without giving away names, addresses, and serial numbers. So, could you tell us about the uh, qualifications, perhaps, of uh, some of these people or their experience? Not naming names, but uh, just a general outlook, please. Um, Kelly, you can cut me off if I'm doing this wrong, but um, two of them have experience on conservation as conservation agents. Um, and the third person has experience in both private and, uh, and municipal experience, some, some of it outside the state and uh, very uh, enthusiastic, intelligent person. Um, so they are all, as I said, they, any of the three are going to be, uh, well, nobody can replace Kelly, but any of the three are going to be good replacements. Um, if they hire any of them. One, one might have more learning curve. Um, I think the person from outside the, um, who's, not a, who's not a current agent will have a, more, a bigger learning curve than the other two. Uh, the other two will, knows everything, will step right in. Um, maybe, maybe we'll have to learn more about the town. I don't think that's so bad because when Kelly was hired, I think that was a learning curve too, so. It, yeah. As well as learning. Thank you very America. much. Appreciate your work on that. Being a little cheeky. I mean, it was an interesting discussion about why we liked different people, and um, as I said, I stated, as you would well guess, I gave my opinion pretty. Um, uh, you know, I had an obvious opinion of who I think the, of the three they should hire. I'll leave it at that. So, How did I do, Kelly? Sorry? How did I do? Did I step around all the right things? And... Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, so How just in terms of the, the transition period, so we are going to have a period without an administrator just because these things take time. So um, there's a few changes where we have like an interim plan and um, all credit to Ellie, who is... <laughs> stepping in to assist fill some gaps with site visits for admin review um, <laughs> for uh, primarily admin review uh, everybody will need to do site visits themselves for new applications and take any notes that you can because there is not going to be an agent's report for a little while um, if there is a project which comes in which you think do not that you need us that you think you need assistance in reviewing then you can make that decision at the hearing and they can hire an outside consultant to assist with that so if a big project does come in that is complicated those riverfront area projects are particularly complicated um yeah. we also have some assistance from the building department for um doing some coc inspections to mm -hmm. to fill that gap um i believe dormery is going to be the staff person at the next meeting um, and if needed, Karen Green will be the staff person at the meeting after that. Um, hopefully that's not necessary, depending on how quickly they're able to get someone in. Um, at the meeting, for the next couple of meetings, I have suggested a change to the process, going back to how we used to do conditions. So I gave you all a copy of the conditions with the numbering on them because um, they won't have a me to come up with those conditions after the fact. So if you could familiarize yourself with them again and when you make the motion, call out the condition numbers for them to record with the vote and then clearly state any additional conditions, you'll actually have to provide the wording for them to write down so that they can include that in the correct wording for the order of conditions. I think it's fair to say we have been Spoiled. Been spoiled. Totally. <sighs> yeah, you guys are awesome. I'm gonna miss you all. So I'm sorry. Don't you no. down the hours? Uh, you have... David, you. David. I just have one quick question about site visits, Kelly. 
Uh, are you saying that we are uh, we should not go with each other? We have we should be by ourselves. We couldn't go. You asked the label to go together if you want to coordinate that. You just okay. obviously careful of the whole deliberation thing but as yeah. long as there's no deliberation on site i think you are able to coordinate to go together and probably Great. appreciate that so they don't have everyone coming individually yeah and I, I i'm thinking of doing the same keeping the same schedule as kelly did like mondays doing the site visits mondays great that's perfect thank you i talked to karen about using the town car so that we're not going through all it. driving around in our own oh is this your pie? Yeah. No. So I'll let for, you know. um, i'm looking for thank you Obviously, what if you, you just can wear um, wear your item of clothing that has a logo yeah. on it, just so that you are you get two of them. Yes, oh, I do. Is mine? I don't know. They're over here. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, I do have a question <laughs> for you on your COCs. Thank you. I know when these come up, you check to see if they have any outstanding COCs. Are you putting that on hold, or is that something I should go so through the files? Heidi, Heidi usually when she takes in an application, she um, checks, to find. checks to make sure, but. It's how that's now communicated to you. So, okay, sure. There's a little gap in the process, and now that you say that, I remember that the Pleasant Street yeah. order had an outstanding CIC as well. So I'll oh, have to go Pleasant, back and remind. Oh, the 202? 202, yeah. It was on the agent's report, but I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Um, so that's something that she can write out for me. So you know, flag you. It. She writes it on sticker. the front of the checklist, so okay. you will see it in the file. It's just remembering to put it in there and yeah. bringing it up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll try and remember that. And I know I forgot a lot of stuff today, but once I get into the, once I get into the Kelly, it's a yes. question. So how long a period of time is going to be a while, like a month or so before someone is hired? I would think it could be that long. So I'm thinking two meetings, maybe three at the most. Okay. All right. Okay, hey, thank you. Kelly, can you put an, um, a copy of what you gave everybody into my little cubby? So when I come and see you Thursday and Friday and cry in front of you, um, I'll pick that up. I've already tried bribing or it doesn't work. I didn't say bribe, I said cry. <laughs> I've already given up that part. So we have to figure out, we have to have her figure out what night we can all get together to take her out to dinner and roast her. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. After her trip to Hawaii, and I think you already had a place that you had in mind. Oh, we were thinking of going Thai. Going where? Thai restaurant. One of the Thai places in Hyannis, right? Yeah. yeah. It's everyone. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. So Whatever we just got to pick a night. No, maybe, maybe Thursday or Thursday night. Yeah, the 21st of April. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, that sounds good to me. Six o'clock. Yes. Everybody, do we want to adjourn the meeting? <laughs> well, isn't there other business? Not, um, that was the other one. Oh, is there any other business? Any other business? Not uh, anticipated. Okay, can I have a motion? So moved. Let's read. Second, 659. Paul? Aye. Pat? Aye. Aye, Tom. Aye. 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 I'll tell you, it's 95 degrees here in San Diego. Nice. <laughs> okay, I, I just came back from the desert and it was only 85, so. Oh, 58. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. I got all that paperwork still. No, oh, I got stacked. Mm -hmm. I I All right. Fine. Thank you very much, everybody, for having. Thank patience. you. Bye. Oh, not kicking me so too many times. Enjoy the weather, David. No thank, thank you. I have too many bruises. Is it very well? Oh, I kept forgetting.